This is a coil out of a car alternator. You can see basically how it's wound. There's gaps in it and so on. Like you can see through it. Okay. It's efficient, but it, you'll never get this coil to operate as a return acceleration coil, no matter how high the frequency is. The regenerative coil, on the other hand, is wound a certain way that is opposite to the, this alternator. If you took this coil and wound it the same way as this one, it would cease to operate. It would cease to function as a regenerative acceleration coil. So, the, <clears throat> I'm going to explain, while I'm on that, I'm going to explain why that occurs. The difference between okay, operation. Operation. Well, I'm, I'm just doing, I'm just doing this here. Yeah, yeah, you can, yes. you can, yeah. Here, what do you say? Because this yeah, why are you, why are you saying that? Here, that be more comfortable? I'll get my parachute. <laughs> it's going to be on, it's going to be on video as well. So. Oh, okay. Okay. So, this is just, this is more for an engineer's benefit. Um, I mean, you'll yeah, appreciate it too. Okay, so this is the equivalent circuit for an inductor. A coil is an inductor. All of these coils, they're all inductors. So uh, a coil is basically it has DC resistance, it has inductance, and in parallel with this is um, capacitance, okay? The, in, in, a, in a normal generator coil, or the capacitance is negligible, okay? And uh, the total impedance, that's the, that's the uh, AC resistance to current flow, the, resist, the AC resistance to allow current to flow. Uh, ZT is the inductive reactance plus the DC resistance. And the inductive reactance of the coil is 2 pi FL. Okay? So what you saw when we were operating at a higher frequency and a lower frequency, the only parameter we were changing was the frequency of operation of the coil. So we were changing the inductive reactance of the coil. Okay? So, at lower frequencies, a coil is operating as an inductor and it stores energy in the electromagnetic field around the coil. Okay? So as frequency increases, the inductive reactance of the coil increases because it's a function of the frequency. The total impedance of the coil increases because it's the inductive reactance plus the, uh, the DC resistance of the coil. The current in the coil decreases because the total impedance of the coil is going up, so the current's going down. The capacitive reactance of the coil goes down, so the coil uh, operates less and less like an inductor, because an inductor needs current flow to establish the magnetic field. That's what you felt in there mm -hmm. when, when the current was flowing. The magnetic field around the coil was maximum. If, uh, if we reduce the current flowing, well, the current, when it's the circuit's open, there's no current, so there's no, there's no uh, resistance. Uh, as, the, as, Z, as the frequency increases, ZT goes up, current goes down, capacitive reactance goes down, the coil operates less and less like an inductor and more and more like a capacitor. Okay? So, and uh, as the frequency goes up, the voltage goes up. Current goes down, voltage goes up. Basically, the Regen X coil, when it's operating above the critical minimum frequency, it's operating as a multi-parallel plate capacitor.
capacitor. The windings are the plates of the capacitor, if you had two windings side by side. Each winding is a, is a plate of the capacitor, and the space between them, the air, is the dielectric. So the region X call, when it's operating above the critical minimum frequency, is storing energy as a capacitor, because now this, is, this becomes less and less, and this becomes paramount, starts to store energy uh, in the electrostatic field between, stores voltage, in the electrostatic field between the windings, okay? As the frequency goes up, the, eventually the dielectric's ability to contain the voltage uh, breaks down and current then flows through the coil, but the, the, the capacitive reactants creates a time delay, which we see on the oscilloscope, just enough of a time delay to delay the load current, just enough to reverse generator armature reaction. So when the voltage that's stored in the, in the capacitance of the coil is released, it has to go through yet another delay, which is the inductor rise time constant. Okay, in a normal inductor where the inductance is very is low, the the five time constant five time constant rise time is very short. It's almost negligible. But in a reject X coil, it's higher, and so you have one component of the load current delay and another. You put the two of them together. It's enough. It's just enough to reverse generator arbitrary action and allow the coil to operate at infinite efficiency. So, um, analysis of the low current sine wave. If we have a conventional generator coil, when a north pole magnet approaches the coil, an, an induced magnetic field is produced around the coil so that the north pole is opposing this, the north pole rotor magnet as it approaches. It, it opposes its approach. Then when the magnet is moving away, the current direction in the coil changes direction and a, a south pole is induced in the core of the coil which opposes the magnet's departure. So, Newton's third law, Lenz's law, for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. This is where it comes from. So the regen X coil, low current delay, with, uh, is important to understand it, how it works, because here we have the, the conventional coil in the prototype establishes the rotor magnet's physical position to the coil's core, okay? So at the crest, that's top dead center. That's when the rotor magnet is basically top dead center to the coil's core. That, that's when the voltage is, is maximum in the core, that's when the current is maximum, and as the rotor magnet moves away, now the current changes direction, the polarity changes direction, it's a south pole, and as the, so here you have the rotor, a north pole rotor magnet approaching the coil's core at top dead center, and here you have it moving away, uh, and the coil is producing a north pole here, and a south pole here, okay? So the region X coils, load current delay, produces, also produces a north pole here up to this point, but beyond the, the crest of the conventional coil, now the rotor magnet's moving away. The north pole rotor magnet's moving away, but the regen S coil is still producing a north pole 
repelling magnetic field, which is assisting the rotor magnet's departure. And it accelerates its departure. When, and on top of that, you also have a south pole magnet that's now coming into position, which is being attracted by this delayed north pole magnetic field. So the, when, the, when the north pole magnet is moving away in the conventional generator, there's also a south pole coming into position. So the induced south pole in the conventional coil is resisting this magnet's departure and also resisting the south pole magnets coming into position. So it's always resistance. And in the regen X coil, it's resistance up to here, but it's resistance at the, sm at the smallest current level, smallest amount, and it's assistance from, from the center point on and, and the the torque produced by the, by the regen X coil in, in this prototype here is enough to overcome the torque produced by the, by the conventional coil. It's designed to do that, so we have acceleration. In the other prototypes, we only have a regen X coil, but as, a, as an explanation tool, this is what this is all about. And, um, that's where the load current delay comes from. That's how we reverse generator armature reaction, regenerative braking, motor action in a generator, and allow the regenerative skull to operate at infinite efficiency. And that's it.